my mind. God's holy word landed to my feet, light to my path. I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. Because the promise of God belongs to me. I trust God's word. Challenging and difficult times. Be 
Jesus some times when faith is not at the forefront of most of people's lives. But help, but help us to maintain our faith in the name of him who calls us, Jesus the Christ, we pray. And all people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Today, I have entitled this message, Do You Possess Faith? I hope that this will resonate. I hope that you hear what I'm asking you. It is a very simplistic question, but it is profound. The question I ask, do you have faith? For it is essential that every person who wants to be associated with God understand that the key item one must possess is faith. Faith in God. For the Bible said in Hebrews 11 and 1, the author of Hebrews unknown, described to us what faith is. He says, now faith is. Now faith is. He says, now faith is. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And there he begins to outline the demonstration of faith that many of the biblical characters of the Bible possess. And then in verse 6 he says, in Hebrews 6, Hebrew chapter number 11, verse 6, he says something quite interesting. He said, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Him referring to God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. There's a comma, pause there. Then there is conjunction, that he is. Conjunction, continuation of what had already been said, that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Faith is a living force drawn from a living source to produce a living result. Faith is a living force drawn from a living source to produce a living result. It is what I need. It is what I must possess. If I don't have it, then I cannot please God. If I don't have it, I can't get from God what God has for us. There are several levels of faith. There is those who have no faith at all, who have no faith at all. There are those who just live in doubt. They doubt. They're very pessimistic about life. They've lost hope. Faith is built upon our hope. They've had some setbacks. They've had some disappointments. And they've allowed the setbacks and disappointments to overwhelm them that they live in doubt. So they have no faith. There are a lot of people like that. I've met some. They're just negative. Everything about life has dealt to a bad deal. They have no faith. Therefore, because they have no faith, they cannot please God. They will always be in a state of paralysis. There's a next level of faith is the one that have little faith. They have faith, but it's so small that they only believe God for small things. They have faith, but they have little faith. The next level of faith is all greater faith. That's a person that just have an extraordinary trust in God. In fact, that's one of the spiritual gifts that it talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. It talks about spiritual gifts. It alludes to this idea of this 
gift of faith. It is this ability to believe God extraordinary. It, I mean, you just, it's, it's this ridiculous faith that, that, that people will say to you, that, that can't happen. It's beyond your reach. It's beyond your means. But you trust God. And God made a lie out of them. When I look over my life, it's more I can say that I've had some ridiculous faith that I had to activate. Not no faith. I've never had been in a position where I didn't have no faith. Even though the setbacks and disappointments in life, the lies have been told, I'm not never allowed those experiences of life to consume me to a point that I become so negative and allow my past to keep me on pause. But I've always had faith. Sometimes it was small faith, but I had faith. And my faith had to, had to grow. And, and when I look over my life, I thank God that God has allowed my faith to grow. If you got small faith, learn how to stretch your faith. My daddy used to call mountain moving faith. Learn how to stretch yourself. Come on. Tell somebody, learn how to stretch yourself. Faith must be activated. Faith must be activated. How do we activate faith? We activate faith through our works. James said, faith without works is dead. You can have faith, but if you don't make an effort, it's dead. So we must activate our faith. Our text that comes to us this morning is a quite interesting text. It begins with Apostle Paul, who was chosen by God. Here's a man who now on fire for Jesus. Let me tell you something. When God saved you, when you get converted, nobody would have to tell you you're saved. We all will see it because you'd be on fire. You'd be, you'd be very uh, skeptical of these people who say they're saved and filled with holiness and there is no joy. When you say you have some joy, you, you have some fire, you know. I, 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 I praise God for uh, uh, Ella Gregory every time she gets up. Uh, she gets up with fire. She, she wants everybody to know you ought to praise the Lord. Amen. I mean, people who are saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, they, they will activate their faith. And the way they activate their faith is the soul some demonstration of the love of God and the joy of God within our lives. Amen. Here this man, Paul, and his, his group of believers, it now goes to, look at chapter number 14, it now goes to the synagogue and began to teach. When they began to teach the truth, there were people who did not want people to hear the truth. Some people want to keep you in ignorance. <clears throat> Remember, the Bible said, the lack of knowledge will destroy you. It is the lack of knowledge that destroyed many of us. Many of us have been destroyed because of the lack of knowledge. And so these men went into the synagogue and began to teach truth. And while they were teaching truth, the Bible said the unbelieving Jews in church in chapter number 14, verse 2, the unbelieving Jews stirred up the Gentiles and made their minds evil, affected against the brethren. There were Jews who did not like what Paul was teaching in the synagogue. So these Jews now stir up the Gentiles and they began to cause an uproar. There were some who was with Paul and there were some Jews who was against Paul and their lives was being threatened. And so the text says they now leave this synagogue and they leave this city and they flee unto Lystra and Derby in chapter number 6 in the cities of Iconia. They left here and they began to flee. They fled for their life because they understood that their message was so valuable that they could not allow anyone to take their life. So now they flee. In verse 7, when they fled, the Bible said, they preached the gospel. Yeah. The primary function and purpose of the church is for the purpose of preaching the gospel. Amen. It is the gospel where people's lives will be saved and changed. How many of you here 
will witness today that your life has been affected because you heard the word of God. Amen. Come on, I can't hear nobody. How many would that you heard? How can they hear without a preacher? And how can he preach except he be sent? Faith come by yeah. hearing and hearing by the word, the word of God. It is through the preaching of the gospel that makes a difference. God, God, word makes a difference. Are you listening to somebody? God, word makes a difference. When you hear the word of the Lord, it is his word that provides you the ingredients for you to rise up and activate your faith and to live out your Christian journey. Now, it is interesting that when they came to Lystra in verse number 8, listen what the text says. It says there was an impotent man, a man that was crippled from his mother's womb, a man who never walked. There was a man who had a condition. He was impotent. He was a man who was crippled, never walked. He never walked. But listen to what it says in verse 9. But this man heard Paul speak. He heard the gospel. He heard the gospel. He had a condition. He was, he was crippled. He was impotent. But he heard the gospel. Oh, thank God. He heard the gospel. And then Paul said, him hearing the gospel, he he, he perceived, he perceived, he perceived that he had faith to be healed. Amen. It was the gospel that he heard that gave him hope, that gave him the faith that this too will pass. Oh, I'm getting excited. It is the gospel that gives us the hope that no matter what situation we're in, it's going to pass. Yes, I don't care what situation you're in right now, God is going to allow it to pass. It's going to pass over. The cloud will not hang over your head forever. Rain will not fall on you forever. It's going to pass. You got to tell yourself, it's going to, I got faith in God, knowing that whatever condition I am in is not permanent. It's temporary. It's going to pass. But you got to have faith. And that faith comes because he now hears the preaching of the gospel. Faith come by him and hearing by the word of God. Thank God for the place, the place that which we assemble, the house of worship, is in this place that the faith should be activated. It's in this house that your faith should be born. In this house. Thank God that God has given us a house but we can activate it, and our first can be birthed in this house. Listen to what he says. He says, I perceive. I perceive this, this man who had a condition. He heard the word, and now he perceived it. Life will deal with you challenges. Oh, you're going to have some challenges. You're going to have some challenges. You're going to have some setups, some setbacks. You won't have some challenges. Somebody right now have a challenge of looking for a place to live. Somebody may have a challenge of looking for employment. Somebody may have a challenge, a health skill, a health challenge. But I want you to know, if you have faith in God, it's all nothing but a challenge. Oh, I can't hear nobody. Faith in God is nothing. When you have faith in God, your challenges is only a challenge because your faith in God will cause you to triumph over your challenges. Man that is born of a woman but a few days and full of trouble. Thank God. But the trouble that you have won't last always. How many of you are glad today that trouble don't last always? And we can be endure for a night. about this text, it says that he perceived.
see that this man had faith, but this man had not activated his faith. A lot of folks have faith, but they don't activate their faith. A lot of folks trust, but they don't, they don't, they don't activate their trust. There's some people who, who have it, but have never demonstrated. The text says that when Paul saw this man, and saw the faith that this man had. All he said to this man in verse number 10, get up! And he, the text says, and he loud, he made a loud voice, and he said, stand up! Stand up, that's what faith, when you really have faith, you're gonna stand up. And you stand up against the challenges of life, you stand up against the struggles of life. Stand up! You, 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 got to, you got to stand up. Faith will give you the strength to stand up. Have anybody in here ever had to stand? You had to stand. You stood. Other folks said, sit down. But you stood. Thank God for Rosa Park when others would sit. She stood. Thank God for the late Muhammad Ali. And he was drafted into going to an army that he felt that was not uh, an army that would be edifying for our nation. He said, no, I'm not going. He, he, he stood on principles. He stood on principles. Yes. I, listen, yes. you, you may die, but stand. Yes. You may be lied on, but stand. Yes. Folks may talk about you, but stand. People may label you, but stand. Because when you stand, you're not standing alone. He's standing with you. Hallelujah. Stand. Had the victory faith. The Bible said, when he heard the word, listen what he did. He stood up. He stood up. And he began to leap and began to walk. I asked you a question early on in this message. Do you possess faith? Do you have the faith to trust God? Amen. It took faith when the early pioneers of this ministry began in 1942 to start a prayer service. They didn't know what it would evolve into. Amen. They didn't know how big it was going to become. They didn't know how many people's lives would be changed. They didn't know how many pastors and deacons and preachers it would produce. But they had faith. Thank God. In God. They heard something, and when they heard it, they stood up and activated their faith. And look what the Lord has done. Thank you to say, look over your life. You heard something. You heard something, and you stood up, and you pursued that which what you heard. And thank be to God, thank God, that what you heard has produced the desired results. Oh, I'm happy to be this morning. To let you know I have faith in God. I trust the Lord with all my heart. And I lean not to my own understanding. But in all my ways I acknowledge him. And don't you know he has directed my path. He has made things better for my life. I thank God. Do anybody have a witness today that you possess the kind of faith that God is looking for? I got enough faith that even though I have challenges, I can praise God in the midst of my challenges. And I understand as I praise God in the midst of my challenges, when praises goes up, blessings come down. I don't need nobody to pump me up and pry me up. All I have to do is think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. My soul cries out, hallelujah. I praise God for saving me because I possess the God-like faith. I possess the faith that can move mountains. I possess the faith that can heal my body. You know, you got to speak to your body. You know, there are some people who always succumb into aches and pains. They have a pain here and have a pain there. And they stay home because of the pain. They stay home because of the headache. But sometimes you got to push yourself through your pain. You know, you know last week when I... Journey back home, I left Greenville, 
North Carolina early Sunday and it was drizzling and then it stopped and then I stopped in Richmond, Virginia. And when I was stopped in Richmond, Virginia, I was, it was clear and nice. But while I was eating, this old dark, dark cloud began to fall. I said, oh, let me get out of here because it's getting dark. I didn't know that up the road that the rain was coming down. It was a torrential rain. It was so bad that it had to pull over to the side until it let up, but it kept on raining. I had to keep on going. I couldn't stay there. I had to keep on going. I had to keep pressing my way through the storm. As I was approaching uh, New Jersey Turnpike, it was getting worse, getting worse. I pulled over, but I kept on moving after the storm seemed like it was society. What seemed like it was society, when I got back in it, it was still worse. But I kept on moving, and I kept on moving. And while I was moving, I was praying. I was pushing through the storm. I have enough faith in God to know that if God created the storm, that God can keep me in the storm. And that's what I want you to know. That's what faith is. That if God ever do anything for you, if he create habit in your life, God knows that you're able to go through the habit. you able. I want you to know this if you heard this, but it's the truth. God will never place on you more than you can bear. He will never Never ever place in your life, place on your plate, more than you can eat, more than you can bear. So whatever you're going through, you ought to thank God that you're going through it because what you're going through is not meant to destroy you, it's not meant to kill you, but it's meant to make you better. So if you got the faith to believe God, God has the faith to make the difference. He can and he will. Hallelujah. I'm finished. He will make the difference in your life. If God has made a difference in your life, grab your neighbor hand and say, neighbor, the Lord has, come on, made the difference. I should have been dead, sleeping in my grave, but God made a difference. God is the difference in this equation. God made a difference. So when I come to church on Sunday morning, I come here into the gates with thanksgiving. Into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good and he must say endureth forever. So right now, you ought to give him a praise.
He had it, but it was the word that activated his faith. Amen. Do you have faith? Amen. If you're going to be a witness for Christ in this hour, you must activate your faith. We win. Hey, we win. Hey. Cheese! 